Welcome back to our Transformers Online Talk. We're so excited that you chose once again to join us, that you chose to be a part of what God is doing, and I know that we'll be blessed through this message. For those who had a birthday, happy birthday to you. We know that you're going to have the best year that you've ever had and that God is going to bless you out of your socks. Claim it, receive it, it is yours in Jesus' name. But before we start, let's just pray together. Father, I thank you for this awesome opportunity to, to communicate what you have laid on from my heart. Father, I pray that your words would be effective, that it would touch every heart, and that we would never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. So last week, Skulk started speaking about um, keep on fighting, keep on fighting the good fight of faith. Um, he, he said, he actually titled the message, Fight On Fighter. So for today, you know, I really, as I've been preparing this, it, it, it was as if the Holy Spirit was directing me with one question. And that's the question that I want to ask you this morning. I want to ask you today, what is in your heart? You see, throughout this lockdown and, and throughout our online talks, we've been encouraging you with the Word. We've been giving you Word. We've been giving you examples from the Bible. We've been giving you scriptures. We've been giving you testimonies. But until you do not get to a, to a place of self-realization of what Jesus has done for you, what the Bible says about your life, you will never experience victory in your life. I want to tell you today that because of our circumstances and everything looks different, everything has changed. But because of that, God is calling us to a very real and intimate relationship with Him, one-on-one. -on -one. There's no time for us or there's no uh, platform for us to come and to sit in, in church and receive the word and go home and stay the same. There has to be a point in our lives where we come to a dependence on God, come to a realization that He's all that we have to hope in and to put our trust in. I want to declare to you that God loves you so much and that He wants you to have a personal relationship with Him. If you do not know Him, the time is very short. If you've made mistakes in, in the past, shake it off. Choose today to shake it off and to clothe yourself with God's glory, with God's goodness, with faith. You know, the scriptures we've been giving you and the examples and everything that's been, that God has been laying on our hearts has been very real. And I know that it's impacted you. But today, you need to ask yourself the question, what is in my heart? You see, it was the condition of David's heart that allowed him to slay the giant. It was the condition of David's heart that gave him favor with God and with men and uh, allowed him the space to be positioned for exactly the time where God needed him. It was the condition of Daniel's heart that allowed him to stand in a time when no one stood with him. No one. Even to the point where he said, that if you do this to me, if you throw me in the furnace, I know that my God will rescue me. You see, that is the kind of faith that we need this morning to, to have as a reality in our hearts. Not something that we hear of, not something that we see other people living out, but to come to a place of making it personal for us. So today, the challenge, the only challenge for today, write down in your notes, in your journal, wherever you, whenever you have your quiet time, write this question down. What is in my heart? You see, it's what, in, what is in your heart that will determine if you will be able to stand the test of time or not. It's what in your, what's in your heart that will determine where you will spend eternity. It's what's in your heart that will determine how you will respond to the pressures and the issues and the things of this world. Because we know that this world is not going to last forever. There is an eternity that waits for us. And I want to say to you young people that just because you're young does not mean you have time to waste. Please listen to me very carefully. You are so precious that you do not have time to waste. Not one moment. Make sure that if whatever you take from this thing, it's this. That you start to live intentionally. That you start to live with your eyes set on the goal, which is to know Jesus intimately. 
You know, that's actually our work as Christians. That's the, the labor that we put in to condition ourselves to such a place where all we see and all we know and all we experience and all we live for is the presence of God. And when we understand what Jesus has done for us on the cross, we will start to live differently. God has called you for such a time as this. Don't waste one moment thinking that you're not worthy, thinking that you don't add value to society, thinking that because of the lockdown, you cannot influence and you cannot live out your dreams. It is possible. God is the God of open doors. And when you put your, your, your life in His hands, He will do something amazing and outstanding with it. But again, I'm coming back to that question. What is in your heart? There's a very big difference between me standing here telling you that you have to believe, telling you that this is the scripture and this is what it says, and these are the examples, and you grabbing a hold of it and making it real for yourself, meditating on it, thinking about it, speaking it, living it out. And that is what God is requiring for, from us in this moment. But His Word says that whatever He asks for, He provides for. So just understand that you are not alone in this journey, that God is with you. He says that He will never leave us. He will never forsake us. So I don't know where you are. I have not seen you in almost three, four months. And I miss seeing your faces. I miss seeing you. I miss seeing how you dance and interact and, and how you worship. But just understand that in this time, God is pruning His children so that we will bear much fruit. And fruit comes by abiding in His love, by abiding in His presence, by choosing which thoughts we will take, choosing to throw off the negative and focus on His Word. I want to urge you today, make the Word alive in your heart. Make sure you spend time asking God to reveal His Scripture to you. He said it, Jesus said that I will send you the Helper who will remind you of the things that I have said. So you have the right as a child of God to call upon the Holy Spirit to open up His Word for you. To call upon the Holy Spirit to give you a rhema word which is, which is the living Word of God so that you can stand strong in a time that is so uncertain and almost scary. I want to remind you of what Paul said in Galatians 6. He says, take up the sword of the Spirit which is the Word. Now, when I read that, it was kind of contradictory, but the Holy Spirit started to reveal to me that word, word, in that sentence, it says, it says, take up the sword of the Spirit, which is the word. That word, word, <laughs> means rhema word, which is the living word of God. Now, you get the logos in the Greek, which is the written word of God. It's your actual physical Bible. And then you get the rhema, which is the word that's in life. And even when Jesus was tempted, he said, the word of God will prevail and it will conquer. That word is rhema, it's the living word. So God wants to say to us today, take up the sword of the spirit, which is the living word of God. You cannot have a living word without a living spirit. You cannot have a living word without involving the Holy Spirit into your time of devotion or whatever you call it, journaling or quiet time. You cannot have that without the Holy Spirit. So let this resonate in your heart today. What is in my heart? Good. How's that? <laughs>